Hey guys, uh, we're going to read uh, chapter 18 and 19 for Hound Dog Joe. Chapter 18. Later, Miss Sweet calls from a restaurant. She and Quincy are eating, she tells Uncle Potluck. They are having an awesome time, she says. She's going to skip work tonight, so Quincy won't need to sleep over. It's okay, Maddie says. It is okay. It will be good to sleep in her bed tonight because she is tired, and it is okay that Quincy isn't coming over after all. That night, Maddie puts her fingers tight around Miney. It's okay, she tells him. She is careful not to twist. She is careful not to twist for hours and hours, and then it is morning. All right, so part of your exit ticket, um, I am asking you to make an inference about why Maddie says it's okay um, that Quincy's not sleeping over. Uh, my inference would be that um, because Maddie is still worried about Quincy having read her notebook. So she's appreciating the time that she gets by herself and that she doesn't have to spend with Quincy because she's not even sure if Quincy is really her friend or not. So that's why she thinks it's okay. All right, let's go to chapter 19. Chapter 19. It is Thursday. <laughs> D-Day, Uncle Potluck says. Doorknob day. Maddie is pushing the cleaning cart, listening to its wheels, clunk, 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 clunk <clears throat> over the tile floor, following Uncle Potluck down the Mitchell P. Anderson Elementary Hallway to the administrative office. The cart has a trash bin on it and a vacuum and slots for spray bottles and paper towels and things for dusting. The vacuum sits tall, so Maddie has to peek around it <clears throat> to see Uncle Potluck, and sometimes she can duck behind it so he can't see her like when she needs to yawn, <clears throat> which she does every dozen clunks or so. She peeks around again, just in time to see Uncle Potluck signal her to stop so he can salute the painting of Principal Bonnet. That's a salute. This time, Maddie salutes too. Maddie May, Uncle Potluck says, I'd like to request that you leave this one detail out of your other wise, impeccable amount of other, of our custodial endeavors. Should our fair principal find I have been saluting her visage, she may not take it in the spirit in which it is meant. Not Maddie nods. And it seems like maybe I ought to be the only one doing the saluting for propriet propriety's sake. Propriety is one of the vocabulary words that um, I asked you to define. She does not ask what propriety is. Does not want Uncle Potluck thinking there is still some custodial wisdom she does not understand. So propriety, what that means is um, like proper behavior, like doing what you're supposed to do. Propriety is doing things appropriately. Okay. Not today. Today she has decided it's the day. She will not wait until the weekend. Today she will work hard and do everything right. And at the end of the day, she will tell Uncle Potluck about her custodial apprentice plans, and he will say that is a very good idea, that she should not bother with lunches and recesses and should not st and should stick to janitorial pursuits. Do you think that it's okay for her to skip lunch and recess and not be with her peers? Hmm. And it will be okay. Pay attention, Maddie reminds herself. I know you are a person who keeps her own counsel, Uncle Pollock is saying, but I am glad to know you won't be recording my saluting for posterity, that means in the future, just in case your notebook should fall into the wrong hands. Maddie does not think about the wrong hands, instead, thinks instead about Uncle Potluck's hands, watches him fish his key ring from his pocket, flip key after key till he finds the one for the administrative office. The main door has a, door, has a knob on it already. It's the inside doors that don't, Maddie sees. The principal's office door and the storage room door and the nurse's room door. <clears throat> Maddie cuclunks the cart into the administrative office carpet. Oh, onto the administrative office carpet. Parks it carefully by the reception desk out of the way where nobody can bang into it. She and Uncle Potluck will clean in here after the doorknobs get put in. Vacuum, dust, to the windows. Right now, Uncle Potluck is hooting, kneeling outside the nurse's room door, opening his toolbox, readying for doorknob installation. There's a couch in the nurse's room. Maddie can see it from behind 
Uncle Potluck. She is not tired, she reminds herself. Shall we begin? Uncle Potluck asks. Maddie's notebook opens to the Mo page, but she flips it fast to a clean one, writes down everything Uncle Potluck does. Some of the doorknobs have stems out the back and some are flat. Maddie watches, writes down how Uncle Potluck pushes a stem knob through the doorknob hole and then fits a flat knob onto the other side. How he twists in three screws to secure it. Then what? Maddie asks. Then there is one last step, Maddie May, for which I will need your expertise. Maddie sets her notebook down, wipes her palms on her shirt. Ready, she says. Uncle Potluck waves her into the nurse's room and shuts the door behind her. Maddie stands there, wonders exactly what her expertise is. Okay now, Uncle Potluck says, open the door. Maddie turns the knob, pulls open the door. Uncle Potluck smiles, accomplished with dexterity and finesse. Maddie does not smile. Her expertise is opening a door? Uncle Potluck phone buzzes. Principal Bonnet needs him in the faculty lounge to answer questions about the floor polishing schedule. Yes, he says formal into it, of course. Maddie May, I have been called into service, but I shall return. Why don't you take this opportunity to lie down for a bit? You look fatigued. You guys know what fatigued means? It means tired. I could go with you, she says. I could help. Rest, he says. I am certain I can handle things on my own. Uncle Potluck leaves, pulling the nurse's room door half closed behind him. Maddie is certain he can handle things on his own too, can handle everything on his own. How is she supposed to show him how much he needs an apprentice if he can do everything fine without her help? Past the half closed door, Maddie spies the cleaning cart. She could clean, couldn't she? While Uncle Potluck is at his meeting, that would be a help. Maddie goes to the vacuum, thumps it down to the carpet, unspools the cord, plugs it into the socket behind the administrative office door, zoom zips the vacuum under chairs behind the reception desk into Principal Bonnet's office, stretching to reach as far as the cord will let her. Done. Maddie looks back at her work. The carpet looks exactly the same as it did before. She cannot, she cannot tell what she has vacuumed at all. How will Uncle Potluck know what help she has been? Maddie leans back, clunking her tired head on Principal Bonnet's office door. She could install the doorknobs. He would see that for sure. Maddie hauls Uncle Potluck's toolbox into the principal's office, checks her notebook. Stem knob through the hole, flat knob on the back, screws twisted in one, two. Maddie does what the notebook says, sliding the stem knob through the door hole. Fitting the flat knob into the other side, pushes in a screw, turns it around until it is tight. If she hurries, she'll be finished before Uncle Potluck gets back. So here she's trying to do the doorknob by herself. He'll be proud of her. We'll say, fine work. And how will I get along without you once the school year commences? That's when she'll tell him her plan. She imagines his face filling with relief sees him bringing her back to authorized personnel, showing her the special chair he'd already made for her, Maddie May, custodial apprentice, printed on the back, so this is her imagining. The last screw twists into place. Now all she needs to do is test things. Maddie turns the knob right then left, watches a silver tongue poke in and out of the side of the door, walks around to the outside doorknob to test it too. There is a button on it, a lock. She pushes the button and the knob stops turning. The lock works. Now for the final test, her expertise. Maddie hurries behind, hurries back into the principal's office and shuts the door. The vacuum cord is wedged tight underneath, so she has to push extra hard against it. But finally the door closes, click. Maddie May Breen, custodial apprentice, will now demonstrate her door opening expertise. She says, but when she turns the knob, it will not budge. Why do you think it's not budging? The button, she remembers. She had left it pushed in on the other side of the door. She has put the doorknob on backwards. Maddie May has been locked herself in the principal's office. All right, and that's the end of chapter 19. What do you think? 
is going to happen next. I'm asking you for a prediction. Um, I'll give you mine. I think that Uncle Potluck is going to come back and um, I think he's going to be a little disappointed in her because he asked her to just rest and chill out and she decided to put the doorknob on and then she didn't do it right. So I think that he's going to be a little upset with her. But that's just my prediction. Okay, you can make your own. All right, and I'll see you guys for chapter 20. Bye.